Well, I hope you enjoyed Benavina Mountain. Wasn't it beautiful? And the story of Danny Boy, very enjoyable, I thought. <laughs> anyway, that's the little picture that we painted, and I think we're going to enjoy doing it. It's got the mountain, it's got the trees, it's got the roadway where the blind fiddler first heard the song. So why don't we, without further ado, come on over to my little chair, and why don't we get together and paint it? So off we go. We'll make ourselves nice and comfortable, and then we'll have our little chats, and we'll do a little painting. Right, but before we do that, as usual, we must always talk very quickly about the materials we're going to need to paint the picture. So off we go, and this time we need five of the colours, five of the eight, and they are lemon yellow, we have light red, we have ultramarine blue, we have raw sienna, and we have burnt umber. We will probably use our white gouache, and uh, I have something else there which I'll tell you about in a moment. Anyway, next we have, of course, the tray, and it is a plastic tray. And that's to put our paints out on. It's called our palette. Then, of course, we have the brushes. And there are two of them. First of all, there's the large, simply painting, goat hair brush. Goat hair for watercolours. Secondly, we have the small one. And it's called a rigger, a number three rigger. And that's to, to do the detail work with. But sparingly, as I say. Next, we have some water, because we mix the water with our paints to put it on the paper. We have our pad to dry our brush on and control the water on it. And last, but by no means least, of course, we have our paper. And this time it's what we call cold press paper, which it always is. Cold press means that there's a little, there's a little indentation in it. It's a medium. There are three types of paper. There's hot press, which is smooth. There's cold press, which is a little bit rough. And then there's rough, which of course is exactly what it says, rough. We're using the middle one. And it's 14 by 10. And we've just marked it off there. You'll have a pad, a 14 by 10 pad. We just want to doodle on the sides. So we use a slightly bigger sheet. That's enough about that. Now, what was that other thing I said? I said we had something else. It's called ox gall. And what I'm going to do is, look, just put a little, just a little tiny bit into the water. It softens the water and helps the, the paint to go on the paper. You don't need it, but I just thought I'd show it to you. OK, have some more fun. Horizon, sky, middle and foreground. Starting off with the horizon. So let's start off by having some more fun by drawing our horizon line. And on this occasion, it's about three to four inches up the page. Because we're painting in landscape, because it's a landscape of painting, isn't it? So we've drawn that now. Now let's put our pencil away. And now let's look at the painting we're going to paint. And we see Ben Navina Mountain in the background. And it was a stormy day, a nice windy day, but bright and sunny at the same time. And we have the trees, and we have the foreground, the middle ground. You see the whole thing? Simple. We put the first bit in. What do we do next? The sky. Some. Right. So let's get ourselves, we we'll take away the ones we're not going to use, put the, pa put the paints we want over here. We're going to put out some raw sienna, some blue, which is the ultramarine. Put them around the side of your palette always like that. You know why? Because then you've got the middle of it to mix the colours on, haven't you? And the other colour we need is light red. Now, where's our light red? Oh, there it is. thought we'd lost it for a minute. So we put the three colours out like that, into the water with the brush, swish it around, get some of the raw sienna, take it out like that. And we're just going to put a light wash of raw sienna, first of all, on the paper. See that? Starting from the top, work down. Now, if you think there's too much on, just add more water. There we go, look, right there. And we're going to stop about an inch from the horizon line. That's a little safety margin, isn't it? There it is there. Yeah. That's enough of that. Next, into the blue. Da, da, da. Now, you always look, you drag the brush back and forward, back and forward, till you fill the brush with paint. That's all I'm trying to do. Now, starting from the top again, we put in some of the blue. Now, again, that, if we find that a bit strong, how do we lighten it? Add more water, of course. Now you can start smiling and enjoy it. Now remember the two-minute rule. I mustn't forget to tell you that one, because every, that applies in every single time we do a landscape. The two-minute rule is you've got two minutes to paint the picture sky-wise. Not the whole picture, of course, just the sky. Now why is there a two-minute rule? Because the paint starts to dry, and then once it does, well, then you've got You'll have a mess if you keep going, because the brush will start to stick on it. Now, I'm going to test this out, perhaps. That's pretty good, isn't it? 
So in we go with some, ha ha, look at that, isn't that a lovely colour? It gives you a nice wine. That's a mixture of the light red and the blue. Now go down a bit there. I don't think we need to go much more than that. The little wisps of sky, see that? It's going out there that way. It's blowing out towards the sea. The sea is out in that direction. It was lovely. That's where uh, we did a beach scene, didn't we? I think that was a... That was out there by uh, Port Rush. Yes. OK, we're ready to dry it. Quick, hair dryer. Now I think we're nearly dry. Uh, don't be afraid to give it a good dry always because, as I've said often before, the one way you can ruin a picture is to be impatient. Trying to put the next coat on before the first coat is dry and, of course, what happens? Disaster. Now, I'm getting ready now to put in the mountain. Ben Novena, huh? So let's look back to the picture again and we see how does it go? Well, it starts about here, and then it runs right across like that. Goes up and down, does all. Yeah, twiggles back down like that. Then it gives a little hump off like that, and right out and down there to the horizon line. That's the first part of it. Now, if you notice, if you look back to the picture again just for a moment, it changes colour. And how do we do that? Well, we take some of the raw sienna and a tiny bit of the blue, mix the two together, and we get a kind of a bluey bluey, raw sienna -y look, if you like. And we run him across there, you see, because that's, this is where the light and the shade hit the mountain, see it? Across like that. Now underneath that again then, goes the next coat. And it's back to the blue again. This is where the, the light and shade comes in, see it? Now we don't need to dry this, because we want this to sink in a little bit into the picture, don't we? Mm, see, because it's it's ch it's all changing colour for us on the on the mountain side. See it? That should be enough now, and that goes right out there, right out to the edge. And we're just going to put a little bit of raw sienna in there just to take the the mean look, as they say, off it. Now I'm quite happy with that. That's pretty good. May not be exactly the same, but then we're not trying to paint it exactly the same. Remember that it's your impression of this mountain. Now, what's next? Well, I think now the next thing is we're coming down towards the horizon. Why don't we have a quick look at the picture and we see what happens when we get nearer the horizon? It gets lighter in colour. Yes. So we've got to put out another colour, perhaps. So why don't we do that? Go over this side here. Let's use it all this time. Some yellow. And what's the other one that's left? We might as well put them all out while we're at it. There's the burnt umber. We've got the whole, all five colours out now. You see them all over the place. Now I'm going to take some of the raw sienna and some of the yellow, mix the two together, get a nice light colour, and then we're going to put it in there, and you'll see it'll, it'll make a nice kind of, hopefully a nice bluey, yellowy colour. Now it's very, very bright there, isn't it? So it's almost pure yellow. Yeah. Now I think we're nearly down to the, down to the horizon line. We may add in just a little bit that, a little bit of darkness and that, just to give the impression of up and down and all over the place here. Now, we're going under the horizon now. And because this is a landscape without any water in it, we don't have to be too particular as to where it is. Do you understand that? So we look and we see that it's now starting to turn green, isn't it? So let's make up some green. Blue and yellow. A little bit of the raw sienna, those three. Blue, yellow, and raw sienna. And there's a little ditch we're putting in. Well, the trees and the plants and all, we might have to give this a little bit of a dry now in a minute. I think we should. Let's give it a dry, because if we go over there, we could cause bother. Do you understand that? Put the brush back in the water again. Keep drying. I'm happy with that. Now let's uh, get back to our our ditch again, huh? Our ditch. So it's blue, some yellow, and some of the raw sienna. Those three colours mixed together make a nice olive green colour, don't we? And we go across. Now there's a big tree there, and this is done with the corner of the brush. See that? 
corner, see? And then we go on again there. Mm, this is a nice little ditch, isn't it? Hope you're, I hope you're following me now. I hope you're doing this. I hope I'm not just wasting my time painting away like a madman here for all, the, all these weeks and you haven't done a thing. You say, oh, I must get at it. And I don't want to hear that word, I must, or when I get time. You know, that's a famous one, yeah. I hear that so often. Oh, I must. Now, I, I beat people. I say, well, how are you getting on with your painting? Well, you know, Frank, I, I really, I'm, I must get a bit of time for it. I must try and do something. Oh, I think that's awful. No time like the present. Now, I put it in just a ditch. The ditch gets thicker and thinner. Not a nice ditch now. I'm kind of pleased with that ditch. Yes, that's ditch enough now. Brush in the water, swish it around, back out again. What's the next thing you do? What would you think now? Now, we're coming down. Do you see we're very nearly down to where that roadway is, but not just yet. Let's do a little more green, and we're going to put a nice field in there. Do you see that nice field of... It's a nice green field where the, where the sheep and the cattle have been grazing, you see it? And it's just the other side of the ditch, isn't it? So that starts and it goes like that, and right across there. Now, we stop short of where that road is. Give it another bash across there. And you see, it's, it's put in downward strokes and sideways strokes of the brush. See that? I'll put a little bit more of, it's a dark, darker shade up against the ditch because there's obviously some reflection there. That di ditch is in shadow, isn't it? There we are. Now I think we're getting the idea. And one more little bit here, and then we look at the roadway. Now, where does that roadway go? This, where did the blind fiddler get to, as the fellow says? Well now, let me tell you something about a roadway first. This is not a roadway. Watch, watch me now. That is not a roadway. That's not the way it goes. Because it must get, as it goes into the distance, it gets narrower, it gets nearer together. Now look, here's a simple one for you. In this occasion, the roadway looks like an, a letter S and a bigger letter S, isn't it? See, it goes out there like that and then down. There we go. That's our road, two letter S's. An S and an S. The road finished. Tis not two parallel lines. Now, having said that now, we just want to fill in a little bit more here to the left of the roadway with green. That's to just, just to, see that? And that's all we need to do. Now, on the left of the roadway, the other side. Make up some more green. Put some of the, the raw sienna in the yellow and blue just keeps it from getting too greeny looking. Do you understand? Now, I, I can go off the side of the page. Do you see that there? Because there is page to go off. In your case, you won't have that, so don't worry about it. Now, I think this is fairly dry here now, so let me start putting in this darkish coloured ditch. Now, again, we're starting from here, and it goes like that, doesn't it? Then it comes down, see? Now, I'll put in, you always work light to dark with watercolours. You know what I mean by that? Hmm, of course you do. Put in the light colours first, and then darken them. If you try to go the other way, you're going to end up in trouble because you won't be able to get it light. Now, there's a fair bit of, fair bit of ditching, and it should be, th you see, it's going up and down like that. Now, here we go into the brown. Ah, you see, that's good, strong. So, on the corner of the brush, and I, there's a hedgerow, is that what they call them? Little fences, that's where all the, this is where all the, the game birds in Ireland, you know, the, the, Pheasants and snipe and all, well not snipe, but pheasants, they used to live in these, and the rabbits and all, they live in these hedgerows. And it's awful to see they're, they're disappearing now because, of course, farmers are becoming uh, more efficient and they find that leaving out these hedgerows, they gain some, some new land, you see. That's the whole thing. But now, of course, do you know what they found? That the hedgerows have a reason because they save the winds and that from the crops. So they begin to put them back in again, I'm delighted to tell you. Yeah. I hope you enjoy hearing about these hedgerows and that. But anyway, there it is. Now, there's a nice sweep in it, you see? Now, I'm going to put in this bottom bit here now. And we're going to change colour on it a little bit. You don't want it the same as the field. So let's have a look at the painting again. Yeah, well, it starts off fairly dark, and then it gets very light, doesn't it? Yeah, so... 
How do we do that? Look, this is just the dark bit, and we start to lighten it. So we get some nice yellow, a little bit of the blue. So you bring it out there. Come on, and look what, ah, that should be nice now. How's that? Absolutely lovely, isn't it? Very nice. Dee, dee, dee. You can go right down to the bottom now. It's downward movement of the brush, down, 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 like that, yeah. Now, if you decide that you'd like other colours, lots of artists use purple. Purple's a very, very popular colour. In fact, probably the most popular colour with artists is purple. If you ever feel you'd like a tube of purple paint, and should be my guest, do it eventually, but not until you've tried to mix your own and, and do a few of the, till you get used to it. Then you can add in your own favourite colours. There we are. Now I'm going to put in the roadway next. And we need a road colour. What's that now? Well, a road colour would be blue and the light red. Exactly the same as the sky, isn't it? Yeah, how did it ever guess? Now, only it's not as dark, is it? So we want to get a very light colour. Ah, oh, look at that. Isn't that lovely? Now, I made sure that the piece, both sides of it, is quite dry because we don't want to smudge too much. There's our roadway in. Tim, <laughs> that easy, wasn't it? We'll put in the bits and bobs on the side now in a minute. Put that brush away for a tick. Small brush. So what are we doing? Well, the small brush is for the trees. And just before we do them, we'll give one more little dry on this area because we don't want to smudge our trees too much. There we go. Nicely, nicely done, huh? Nicely, nicely done. Small brush into the uh, into the brown. I give it a good swish around in the water. Now this will not hold as much water, of course. So therefore, it won't hold as much paint, will it? So we'll have to do a couple of reloads on it. All right, let's see. Pick one of the trees and and don't, and then a bold statement. You know what I mean by that? Don't be afraid of it. In other words, come on, wiggle it all the way up there. Up she goes. This is the skeleton of our tree now. It's in the hedgerow there, isn't it? And we go, oh, it's got to go out to the field a bit like that. Now build it. It's only a skeleton of a tree you're making. And it doesn't have to be exactly, exactly the same. Please, in fact, I beseech you, do not try and make it exactly the same or, or it'll begin to look. I find once I get a shape. It's all you want is a shape. Now that's the first tree. We go up a bit higher there with it. That looks all right, doesn't it? Yeah, and let's put them beside it now. It's there, isn't it? And it goes this way. We ran out of paint, didn't we? I love doing these trees. They're great fun, aren't they? Mm. Trees are dead easy. Wobble, wobble, wobble all over the place, yes. Wobble, wobble. There's another one there. And I think we can probably, probably put a nice branch going out that way a bit. Now, they do look a bit scraggy when they're, <laughs> when they're, when they're being built, as they say. But I promise you, that'll look fine now in a minute. When we get out the leaves and things, I just put one more little, because one is higher than the other, you see that? Now, okay. And we probably would want to put another branch out there, just a tiny one. That's it, right. Now, small brush away. Use that as sparingly as possible. Now I'm gonna dip into the yellow and this mixture here that I have, which is the raw sienna and the blue. Mix the two together, keep them fairly dry. The brush is fairly dry now. And then using a dry brush, we dabble it on, see? Corner the brush, dabble, 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 dabble. Now, of course, that looks pretty insipid looking at the moment, but we'll soon fix that, because we've got to darken it now, you see. So we take some blue, some of the yellow, and a little bit of burnt umber. This is quite a dark color now we're making up. And now, which side of that tree would be the dark side? I suppose it would be this side, wouldn't it? Because the light's coming the other way, so... And always remember, the only the one sun around, so don't... Don't have two of them. Now, I think that's pretty nice, isn't it? So our trees are looking pretty good now. Yeah. Put him back in there for a minute again. Now, let's get some more of this shadow color, which, of course, is blue and... 
and blue. Look, and then you follow the follow the way the road goes. It's the blue and the light red, isn't it? And that goes that way. That's a big tree there. And it goes right across. And then where the tree, you see? See that? Now nice. Now, while we're at it, we now start bring our little posts. Post, post, and uh, post. Now they, now they get smaller as they go away from us here. Post, 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 post. Near enough, right? And then we've got to join them all up. The little strands of wire. They, they're inclined to get a bit lax looking, these wires on the left row. The sheep climb over them and all kinds of things like that. Now we're beginning to make sense of this picture, aren't we? Huh? How are we getting on there? We've got to put a centre in it. In the road I'm talking about. So, okay, there it goes down there, different level. Oh, it's a little bit lighter than that, so we can we can actually make it lighter, can't we? See, until you put this little bit in the middle of the roadway, the roadway is inclined to look a bit nondescript, isn't it? Now, some of the brown, because we've got to put in some texture on this thing to make it look, and the same thing there. And we have a bit, a bit here and there, not too much, a little bit there and here and there, and oh, we've got to cover up that bit there. We're having good fun now, aren't we? <laughs> are you enjoying this? I hope you are. I thought Benavina Mountain was lovely, and I thought the story of Danny Boy, it's the truth, the truth, by the way, it is the third most sung song on earth, Danny Boy. Now, I think we're going to give this one more little swipe here. He says, I'm going to darken that down a little bit, more greeny looking, I think it needs to be, just there, look, a little bit there, a little bit there, just to break it up, the texture a little bit. That's rather nice now. Now, we didn't put out a white gouache yet, did we? Mmm, little, little flower, little daisies. Watch this now. Into the white gouache. And doing that little, 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 little. I love dabbing it like that. Look at it. Not too much. Don't come mad at it now. That's really enough, isn't it? Now, you could use, if you had some, so you use some yellow, couldn't you? A little bit of yellow here and there. You know, I want to leave them to have enough time for something else, don't I? Because, you know, the sad thing is that this is the last program in this series. Simply painting round the world. So you wouldn't know where we're going to turn up next. But sh be sure of one thing, we certainly will turn up. And we'll be back. I'm just going to sign this, and then we've got to put a little mount on it. And when we do that, we have to say to you, that, as I said, unfortunately, this is the last in the series. So you make sure that you try this out. And when I come back, you'll be an artist. So from Frank Clark, until we meet again, bye-bye. <laughs>